Welcome back to Afternoon Express. You're live on SABC3. Autism or autism spectrum disorder refers to a broad range of conditions characterized by challenges with social skills, repetitive behaviors, speech, and nonverbal communication. Indicators of autism usually appear by the age of two or three. Some associated development delays can appear even earlier, and often it can be diagnosed as early as 18 months. Research shows that early intervention leads to positive outcomes later in life for people living with autism. Autism. And to share information on what autism is and how you can manage it, we have Alana LaRue and Elisna Koch from the Beacon School for LSEN. Welcome to The Loft. Thank Lovely you. to have you with Thank us. Thank you. This is such an, an important subject and we can't speak enough about it. Um, what, how did you recognize this need and why was it important for you to be the ones to meet it? Well, that's an interesting one. Like, I, I don't think we were really chosen to to get into this field like I think the field chose us like if you really think about it like working with autism there's a lot of people in the field but like you need to have a passion for it like it's not in every it's not in every person to work with people with autism and, and with that um, I think our school was asked in 2010 to start an autism unit and as such our principal said yes and since then we've now grown to 88 kids at that's our school incredible. that's currently there, that yeah. are on the spectrum. Yeah. So for anyone who doesn't know out there, what does it mean to be on the spectrum and what does it mean to have autism? So basically it refers to the same, same thing. thing. Mm -hmm. um, but on the spectrum basically refers to the severity which, to which your, your autism effect. affects you. Yeah. So there's a wide range of a spectrum and you get kids or, or people with um, more high needs and you've, yeah. you've got people with lower needs and, and with that you get in between you get so many people with so many different aspects and autism affects them in so many different ways so on the spectrum basically refers to the severity that your autism affects you but it's also where you find yourself at. yeah mm. how, how can autism be, treat, be treated and what is the, what what is that integration between therapy and treatment and how do those two meet so there's quite a wide variety of approaches and therapies out there. And, um, but I think it's very important with autism to take a person-centered approach because one pers it's not a one-size-fits-all mm. approach. So what might work for one individual definitely won't work or might not work for another individual. So um, we definitely, or I definitely would advise um, parents to do research. There's a lot of research funded <gasps> Um, therapies and treatments out there that um, has got a lot of re research backing it. So yeah. before you decide on a, um, a course of treatment, look at the research that's been done, look at the outcomes that they've been receiving over the last few years to decide if that's suited for your individual child. Yeah, um, yeah there's... Um, for, I know in South Africa there's a lot of, there isn't a lot of, um, if you're, d depending on which area in South Africa you live, but there might not be um, treatments or therapies available mm. in your area. So I would suggest for those parents to strengthen their children's communication needs. That's very important. Okay. Um, I think a simple form to strengthen their communication needs would be to use, um, not to use a lot of language, don't over, over, overwhelm them with language. Mm -hmm. Whenever possible, support your language with photos or symbols or pictures. That's also very yeah. important. And um, also, yeah, as teachers, we often refer to um, Pinterest for how to address sensory needs. So there's okay. lots of sensory activities on Pinterest for those parents who want to go and have a look there. Um, we often use it in school. And then, um, yeah, uh, being aware of um, yeah, uh, sensory, uh, uh, yeah, being aware of sensory processing disorders. Yeah. So um, how this can affect your child's behaviour. Often, um, behaviours can see, be seen in a negative way when it's actually just sensory issues. That, that's oh, the underlying right. cause. Can you so give us examples of that, perhaps? Um, so a child might um, be movement seeking. Uh, we'll, we often refer to it as movement seeking okay. and when a parent requires him to sit at the table to eat or and they find it very difficult to keep still so giving deep pressure um, prep, giving them deep pressure we, which we refer to as proprioception input um, it might help calm a child or if they're having difficulty sleeping using a weighted blanket that mm. can help give that proprioception input that deep pressure which might um, help them sleep yeah. better 
Um, there's loads. There's yeah. various. Um, so, I mean, I know, I, know a lot, I know a lot of parents who maybe suspect that their children are on the spectrum, and it's so difficult to get it diagnosed because you get sent from pillar to post, go see that psychologist, no, go see that educational person, and before you know it, you're just giving up. For, mm. for parents who are out there just seeking answers, what would you recommend as a first step for them to, to, to start at? I think the first thing that we need to tell parents out there is you're not alone. Like, that is the biggest thing is there's so many people struggling to get this diagnosis. And it's, yeah. it's really like it is a very big thing at this stage and it is a massive struggle. But most of the times um, it's diagnosed by medical doctors okay. or even psychologists and psychiatrists that work in the field. So... And also going to either a speech therapist or occupational therapist or somebody who works in the field of autism would also help you and direct you to the correct referral agents who can help you then yeah. to get a formal diagnosis. Yeah. Um, can, can children who suffer from autism grow up into adults with a full life where they can manage the autism and, and have a fulfilling life? I think from both of us, that's a definite yes. Yeah. yeah. Designing, yes, yes, mm. definitely. No, so, a lot of people on the spectrum, they are in the workplace, they yeah. do have families, they do have relationships, they do have kids. There's, it's not impossible. There is obviously, there's a wide spectrum. So the amount of support that you need to, to be a fully functioning adult in society is, is one of the biggest yeah. concerns. So there is a reality that some, some people might need more support. And that, I think, is, is everybody's job to kind of help yeah. as much as they can to yeah. help integrate people with autism into... Yeah. Society. For people who aren't, uh, you don't have like a myriad of, of support system and lots of money to just get all the help they need, are there government agencies and programs that they can go to for help? So there is, um, we've got the charity um, uh, oh, Autism, I... Autism South Africa. Mm -hmm. um, they've, got a, they've got a website, they've got a Facebook page, and with that, like, they know about all of the private, public, every, all of the resources out there that are in each and every area yeah. within our country. So our best bet would be to go to their website and actually look at what is the support systems within your immediate surroundings. Yes. And often mm -hmm. they reply immediately to messages that's being sent to them. That's so great, yeah. they're a great, great space to start from, like, yeah. just in finding support for yourself. Yeah. Thank you so much for being so optimistic and just speaking about treating autism so enthusiastically. It's really refreshing. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. And of we course, love what we do. Yeah, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> it's pouring out of you. And of course, all the details are on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za.